Hey, welcome to the second episode of Painting with Maylene. Thank you for watching my last video and thank you for all your comments. A lot of you spoke about Bob Ross and that's actually uh, somebody I did not grow up watching. If you watch some of my older videos, which by now have probably been erased, you know that I'm originally from Costa Rica and we actually didn't have PBS. So I didn't actually grow up watching Bob Ross. Because of all your comments, I actually checked out a few episodes and he's so cool. And it's kind of funny that we are similar in some ways. Um, and in just in watching two to three episodes of his show, I learned so many new techniques. So I just want to say today's video is dedicated to Bob Ross. We're going to talk about joy and we're going to talk about painting. But before we get to painting, I want to talk to you about why we should paint. If you, on the other hand, however, would like to just fast forward to our painting of the day, please go ahead and fast forward to the video. I'm going to put the time frame right here. But like I mentioned in my last video, I started painting because I went to a museum in LA and I looked at the walls and they're like very simple paintings. So why can't I do that? And so I went home and started painting. But the reason why that was so meaningful to me was, uh, was because of two reasons. When I was younger, my mom would always buy me acrylic paint and I would paint like all the time. I would draw and paint stuff. And the reason I stopped was because one day, I remember I would always just draw this beach scene that my sister taught me how to draw. But one day I got very ambitious and I wanted to paint like a, a bowl of fruit. I don't know where I ever saw some kind of a picture or painting like that, but I just felt like I'm ready for the next step. <laughs> Let me paint some real stuff that's in my house. And so I set up a bowl of fruit and I tried to paint it. And of course it was terrible because it was my first time. I had no painting classes. I had terrible paint. So yeah, like I could see through, you know, I could see the pencil through. Um, and for some reason I was like, I had to be like nine or 10, but for some reason, the fact that I couldn't get through that one painting, I stopped painting and I didn't start painting until that day in my last day, my last year of college that I went to that museum. And I was like, why was I so dumb <laughs> to just stop painting? Like, of course I'm gonna be bad at something so um, challenging on the first try. And if I had not stopped, I would now have some 15 years experience, I could probably make some really like hyper-realistic paintings like I wanted to make originally, but because I gave up, I was never able to uh, paint at all, right? So I kind of want to talk to you today about trying not to be a perfectionist when you're trying out painting or any other new hobby, really. And I want to show you a little bit about how I started so that you understand that you're not gonna be stuck being bad all the time. Now, I've actually thrown away a lot of my, um, the work that I started doing and I've just got kind of the more meaningful because it was getting to be too much. Um, but just to show you my progression, I'm gonna show you some of the ones that I still have with me. Here's me trying to do some realism. And you can see that these I made were actually really cheap paints it would be like you know those 10 color packs that like michael's or one of those art art crafts stores um this one i actually really like the colors and the reason why i think it stands out is because there's a lot of dark and a lot of light and like i was telling you in the last video it's i think it's not so much about what type of painting you're using it's about what colors you put together that is going to make it stand out um, and you can see some are better than others, but I just kept going because I said to myself, look, I, there's no way I can go back and see how good I would have gone in the last 15 years, but I can only go forward and see how good can I get 15 years from now, right? So I kind of made that challenge to myself and that promise to myself that I would continue with painting. And I think at the end of the day, you just have to be willing to be bad. At a hobby for a little bit and you're gonna get better and then you're gonna be bad again and you're gonna be better but you have to be willing to struggle and eventually you'll get good so when i started painting i just let myself play with color 
I'm not very good at planning, so that's why I don't like realism. I'm not very good at coming up with an idea. I'm more of like, I just kind of want to put paint on a surface and spread it around and see what it does and how it looks good together. What I got to learn in just playing with color was how to move painting around a surface, what colors look good together, what colors I like to create with all the time. And if you don't want people judging you on your art, then you know don't show it to others. It can be something that you just do on your own in your bedroom or you know in your kitchen, wherever. And you don't ever have to show anyone. So if you make really ugly stuff, just keep going. Just don't don't be like me when I was 10 years old and I put unrealistic expectations on my first try. Just keep going and um, you're just you're gonna get better. Like there's literally there's nothing else that can happen. You're just gonna get better. Okay, let's actually start painting. I'm using a canvas that I already painted the background um, and I put it away about a year or two ago and I'm gonna come back and put lighter colors at the top because I think that will be a good contrast. And the reason I paint and why I titled this video The Joy of Painting is because when I found painting, I really felt like all my hobbies were a lot of work. I was writing a lot for school, applying to grad schools, which I ended up never going to. I was doing a lot of YouTube videos. So I remember at the time, my wrist actually started hurting from being on the computer so much. My job was in an office as well. So when I found painting, not only did obviously my... Um, the wrist and hands didn't hurt because it had nothing to do with a computer but I actually felt like it was something I only did just for joy and that's why I've kept it in my life because I have no one to answer to with my paintings and I paint because it makes me happy and that's why you should paint as well because it makes you happy and when I look at my painting right here I actually I'm really upset that I didn't stop <laughs> because I think it looks awesome even if I stopped right here as well I think that would look so cool and I just I put it on my wall ASAP but I was talking to you about perfectionism at the beginning of this video and I spoke about how perfectionism can stop you from doing or trying anything but perfectionism can also go the other way you can actually go too far because you feel like oh it's not good enough yet or you can do better and neither one is good, but, you know, I wanted to share with you in this video that, yes, there's a lot of joy in the painting, and that's the reason why it should stay in your life, in my opinion. But you're also going to encounter a lot of struggle. There's going to be moments where you're going to feel like, oh, you fucked up your painting right here. <laughs> like, I already felt like I have fucked up my painting. Where am I going to go with this? So I just kept adding more and more and more. And I think the biggest mistake in this painting, more than anything, was that I didn't work how I usually work. And I didn't, and what I mean by that is that I didn't take breaks. I never stopped to get a f drink of water. I never stopped to get food or check my phone. I had the camera rolling and I felt like, you know, I'm on, I have 30 or 40 minutes or so to make a painting because of my battery. And then the, painting became so complicated that you know I just got lost in trying to make a good painting so don't be afraid to step away from your painting and see if you feel like it, you like how it's how it's starting to look or you want to continue like right here I'm like fuck I fucked up so let me start over and sometimes this technique works for me where I just put a color over everything but what I couldn't tell back then was that in spreading around something that had so much white, my canvas started to look like there was baby powder in it, and I didn't like that. And I also don't like that by putting that burgundy on top of all the white colors, I actually took away the, the dark purple that I really enjoyed that I started with. So yeah, don't be afraid to step away from your painting, put it aside, work on a different painting, Put that aside, work on a different painting. That's actually how I work when I'm most successful. I'm usually working on different canvases. It actually helps me sometimes when I get stuck to just move on to a different blank canvas or another painting that 
I had set a time or that I had set aside at a different time. So don't be afraid to do that as well, you guys. If you feel like you're getting stuck, you're doing way too much, there's too much painting on your canvas, you're it's starting to look ugly, walk away, have a snack. And the only time I took a break from this painting was when I went to the gym at the end of the day after having spent probably two to three hours trying to make this painting and this video. And I came back home and I understood why my painting looked weird. It was because there was no contrast. I put so much of the pink on top of everything that there were no dark colors on my canvas. So you can see me here. I stopped looking at the camera. I stopped trying to make a video. And I just focused on being very detailed and enjoying painting, really. I stopped caring about making a video. And I'm not going to lie. At first, I wanted to delete this video and make a new one. But I can't just show you the joy of painting. I actually have to show you the other side of painting, which is the struggle. So do not be afraid if this happens to you guys. It happens to everyone. A master is someone that has failed many, many more times than a beginner. So don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to try to fix it. Don't be afraid to put that canvas aside and start all over. Just do what feels good. And you'll know you're done with a painting because you'll enjoy looking at it. Not because you think it's perfect, but because you enjoy how it makes you feel to look at it. And with that, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you'd like to continue talking about world domination. And make sure you sign up for my newsletter on my website so that I can tell you when a new video or a post is up.